Two weeks ago, we uploaded this video discussing about the crisis and the downturn of photography business this year. And since then, we have more than 50 over 1,000 views and 300 over comments from professional photographers from all over the world agreeing with the points and the problem that I mentioned. And one of the viewers, Daryl Poor, a photographer and the master of light for the brand Roto Light, reached out to me. Hi, it's good to be here. So he was mentioning that you offered solution and what you can do, but you didn't tell us what you did to your business to make it better. And I was like, right, I didn't do that. I didn't share with you what my studio, my brand and my businesses do to make business better. And Daryl did some changes too. So we decided to get together and do one episode now and share with you what are the things that we did to our business to make it better this year. And that's what this episode is about. So one of the things that hit me is that new photographers and those influencers are coming to my business now and telling the clients that, hey, I can do videos for you, they are really quick and cheap, and at the same time, I can be shooting photos for you as well. So that made it very affordable. So then I realized one thing, newcomers are trying to take my business, mm -hmm. which happens all the time. But the difference this time is that their skill set is way much lower, they're very much newer, and the price is tremendously cheaper. And when the market just came out from COVID, business owners will go like, hey, why not? Instead of hiring somebody so mm -hmm. expensive all the time, let's try somebody cheaper. Because during COVID, I realized one thing, the world get used to trying new things. Let's try to work from home. Let's try to do meetings online. Let's try to put things up our nose and see whether we are infected this week. <laughs> there are a lot of things that they yeah. tried. But you know what? Let me tell you one thing that the world did not try. That is seasoned veteran professional photographers like you and mm -hmm. I never try to do newer things, right? Yeah. It's disturbingly true. Mm -hmm. But what I realized is this. When you are doing that, the newcomers have nothing to lose. Yeah. They are new and they can come up to your business and start taking your business. Okay, yeah. one of the things that I did was I realized that I don't do cheap things. Okay. I don't mean that new photographers do cheap things, mm -hmm. but what I mean is that their price are cheaper. Okay. But they are not stupid. When their price are cheaper, their services are shorter. Uh -huh. Their quality is not that nice. Uh -huh. Now think about this way. I'm a seasoned photographer. I've got a name to maintain. But the thing is that I cannot shoot not so nice, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Why not? Make your name? No! That's my point. <laughs> okay. That's exactly my point, right? Let's yeah. look at all the brands that we have. If you look at the Samsung phones, they have the high-end, really expensive one mm -hmm. that I cannot afford to buy, but they have the cheaper version okay. meant for retirees like my dad, mm -hmm. right? And we don't. Do you? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, you, it, when, when we go out and shoot menu for restaurants, we have a fixed price. But we don't have a cheaper alternative. So what I did was, I offered them, if you want me to shoot with a smartphone, it's cheaper. Not because it's cheaper and faster to shoot. Yeah. I still have to spend a lot of time, Yi Chong still have to spend a lot of time mm -hmm. in the back end, editing it and making it look as nice as something shot with a DSLR mirrorless. Mm -hmm. The first mm -hmm. thing we need to do is to ensure that we do not lose clients. So now they have a cheaper option. You get what I say? But what if like they always select the cheaper options? I know what you mean now. Yeah. I used to have 5,000 yeah. and then we offered 2,009. Mm -hmm. You got a point there. What happens is that I mentioned clients get used to cheap things, yeah. right? And you're still shooting quite good. Mm -hmm. Why do I need that 5,000 mm -hmm. one? So two things can happen here. You can have it a limited time promo. I'm not uh -huh. saying that you do this forever. Uh -huh, so you uh -huh. can have a promo now. Because what happened is that those new people coming into the market are going to be stealing your business. Mm -hmm. So you just make sure that the first three months, they don't sustain. Mm -hmm. They're going to go like, oh, I'm cheaper, but it's not that much more expensive. Right? Mm -hmm. Another way that I do is when I'm offering that the 2009, I will still shoot some higher quality photos with more lights and show them the big difference okay. and they go like... That's a good idea. Right. It's yeah. just like Porsche. Yeah. You know, yeah. you buy yourself the cheapest uh, Porsche uh -huh. and then what does the Porsche salesman do? They always try to upgrade you. Yeah. Next year, buy uh, this. Mm -hmm. They make sure that you don't stay poor, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? You, you get my point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is one of the things that you can do. Ensure that you do not lose clients to the newcomers that are shooting so cheap. That's mm -hmm. what happened actually. The world is just shooting photos 
by using video influencers and they go up to them and say, you know what, shoot some photos for me too. Yeah, yeah. So if they can shoot lousy, my point is if they can shoot lousier than you, cheaper than you, then why not just have a cheaper package? But I think uh, nowadays a lot of my clients think that, you know, they're going to leverage the followers of the influencer. Right, they're looking at the yeah, number yeah, the of numbers, followers, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, here's what we need to do. All of us are social media celebrities, mm -hmm. right? I know you because I follow your work. Look at Daryl Poir's work here. He's the master of light of Rotolite. And when I look at his Facebook gallery, I was blown away. And that's what professionals do. Uh -huh. We live high and mighty in our world of professional castle that we don't show you our work that much. Mm -hmm. Am I not right? Yeah. Have you seen my work? Not much. You yeah. haven't seen really my work. Yeah. You know what? I tell you what, let's just dedicate a few seconds to show everybody our work. And that's our biggest mistake as a pro. I'm not asking you to share works that you're shooting right now. But what about sharing works that you have done before, behind the scenes, uh -huh. months later, when the contracts are over, when the clients are already done broadcasting it? I used to do that. So my wife, Michelle, markets my product and she says that you don't post that much photo anyway. My friends also say that, you know, Daryl, you are the one photo guy. Usually I do photo shooting. I and post you only one, one photo. Photos. You are and, lucky you post and, one photo. And people like you to post series of photos. And that's what I realized how we progress. I still remember that when I first started the first five years, mm -hmm. I post tons of photos. Mm -hmm. I show off my photos. Because I felt that it was okay to show off when you're new. Uh -huh. But when you are, you know, more seasoned, you start showing off, people go like, ah. This old guy is just <laughs> showing off too much. He has been showing off for 25 uh, years, you know. But then I realized one thing. That's the difference between passion mm -hmm. and showing off, right? And when the new people do it, they are just passionate, yeah. right? You know what I show off now? Me fixing my 22-year-old BMW. My clients don't need to know that. <laughs> it has nothing to do to improve on my revenue. Mm -hmm. So here's one thing that we can all collectively improve on. We should share more photos passionately. Sometimes showing the photo itself may be a little bit awkward because the clients may not have used that photo mm -hmm. yet. Yeah. But what you can do is show the behind the scene and here I am today shooting this. Mm -hmm. You show the setup, you show your roto light, yeah. the brand is happy and the newcomers would go like, wow, look at Daryl. When he shoots, he uses four LED lights and you can do a snippet behind the scene kind of yeah. thing and just show people the brand that you're shooting I also realised that now, mm, social media, people like BTS. If you show BTS, right. I think people will, you get more views and likes. Right. Yeah. And since BTS, you don't need to trouble yourself. You just mm -hmm. go to your lighting assistant, empower him and say that, hey, hey, look, look, look. Mm -hmm. I know you already set up all the roto lights. Listen to me. When I'm shooting, shoot some photos. Mm -hmm. And I see that in models and celebrities that I shoot. Every time I shoot them, they'll bring one assistant. Uh -huh. They'll help them with the wardrobe. Uh, yeah, yeah, when yeah. they're done helping with the wardrobe, I want to show yeah. my fans what I'm doing today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You can call it show off, but you can call it fans feeding. You mm -hmm. need to feed your fans. 
So if you're not doing that, start doing that now. And I promise you, you're going to appear on your client, potential clients' walls and feeds and Instagram. How long have you been a professional photographer? Three to four years. Okay. Out of the three to four years, what is the problem that you face now? Why is it that this year the pricing is so bad? Probably the newcomers. And uh, I believe that the newcomers, right, now they are pricing their service so low due to, I think, the lack of experience and booking experience that they don't know how to code their, their client properly. Ah, they don't know hardship. Yeah. They don't know how much to code for an event to shoot for six hours. Yes. They don't know that six hours is actually eight hours. You yes. have to go an hour, you know, yes. that sort of thing. Yes. Okay. Yes. They think photography as a service as like, how much per hour? But it's not. Right? You, you agree with me or not? You for are example, saying that. For like, example, uh, hour is 200, then I go for four hours, it's 800. They, they, they usually the base on that kind of that kind of calculation. Okay, so a simple non-creative calculation. Yes. That means that I don't put a creative input. It's just like you asking me to sweep the floor, how much is it <laughs> yeah. going to be? So now we know influencers are doubling themselves to be photographers and taking the veterans and professionals' yeah. business away. Mm -hmm. What are you doing with this knowledge now? I'll become an influencer myself. Perfectly. Yeah. I do that too. Yeah. Right. I remember that you showed me videos that you went around Penang. Yes. A TikTok, your TikTok channel. Yeah, Tell us about that. So we started a TikTok channel, a food channel that, you know, it's, it's uh, introduced uh, local food in Penang. Actually, it's our beta testing that we want to test because previously we don't have any TikTok channel. So we started this with my... But you uh, get a lot of views, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. We got like over... 30 over 1,000 followers in two wow. months. Of course, now we are trying to, to change the method. We colleagues go to uh, have dinner, have lunch, we try to take some short videos. So now uh, we try to improvise it by uh, maybe trying to interview business owner and things like that. So we try to improvise and make it make it better, the channel. Right, so when a photographer do influencers work or videographer do influence work, mm. the quality is so much better. Yeah. Same, if you follow me on Facebook and Instagram, I've been reviewing things like electric bicycle, electric cars. But if you look at it carefully, we do it with better qualities. And I end up doing that simply because I remember I was shooting for a few restaurants. Mm -hmm. And then the clients say that your videos are nice. Would you be okay to do a few 30 seconds vertical format video for us to put on Instagram? You have like 11,000 followers. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, why not? I'm not going to charge that because it's so easy to do. And here's the point. You can actually prevent influencers and newcomers from taking your business. Earlier, we mentioned about not losing your client. Mm -hmm. This time, we're going to focus on, you know what? In, instead of just defending, we're going to yeah. attack. We're going to take their business as yeah, well. We're going to yeah. be influencers Precisely, as well. Yeah. We're going to do our behind the scenes. We're going to promote the brand. So that's one more thing I want to share with you. Every time you do a photo shoot or videography shoot or event or anything, mm -hmm. do a quick video. Just hold the phone and say, Hi, my name is Andrew. I'm a photographer. Today, I've got the honor to shoot a 30,000 grand production photo shoot. When that happens, the client go like, hey, I'm proud. I'm doing a 30,000 shoot and my photographer is helping me to promote it. I don't have to say that I'm spending so much. People are saying that we're yeah. spending so much. Yeah. That's what we need to do. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the idea. Your TikTok channel was very inspiring. Thank it's got you. a lot of viewers. Mm -hmm. So you do charge extra for help the client to post on Correct. your Because channel. if you were to shoot the menu, mm -hmm. right? If you were to shoot the portrait of all the insurance agents mm -hmm. for an agency, that's only one time, yeah. maybe two times a year. Yeah. But if you do those influencer video, like mm -hmm. visit Kampong La, try out their curry, uh -huh. lamb, and all that stuff, okay. that can be continuous. Okay. That's what a lot of those KL foodies, a lot of these influencers mm -hmm. are doing. But you can do it better, we can do it better because we put in the quality in production. Mm. So with your knowledge and experience and the skill that you have, you mm -hmm. can actually go one up better than mm. the influencers. Example, when I do my videos, I actually do narration and voiceovers. Example, hey, have you seen this new electric bike? If you haven't, check out this bike. So that's narration. When the videos appear, you actually have visual, you have audio as well. Most of the influencers that I see in Malaysia, they don't have narration. And most of their audio is poor. I agree with you because they don't use professional equipment, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes yeah, yeah, they just yeah. clip 
a cheap microphone ah, there. Yeah. So if we're going to do it, do it better. Mm -hmm. And then initially, you might not be able to charge. But as you do it as an add-on service, example, what we do these days is when we do your menu shoot, it's going to be like five to six grand. Mm -hmm. And then the food styling is separate. And then we're going to throw in one free video if you sign up two of these influencers type video. Okay. Yeah. Right? Okay. And because they wanted this, they end up signing up for the menu yeah. shoot as well. So, Andrew, you know that I've been teaching, right? I saw. I saw your yeah. posters. So, do you think that this education part will help the market? Let me be very honest. I was fascinated. When I look at this, to be honest, I nearly wanted to sign up and pay to go to your class. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Yeah. That is partly because I realized that for many years, I think Yi Chong can agree with you, that I don't see people signing up for classes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? They yeah. go online, they don't do physical class. I don't do that much of physical class. Mm -hmm. So Daryl, that's a great idea. Because I remember that before we started filming, you're telling me that mm -hmm. the new people don't know how to code. Yeah. And they're coding cheaper. Mm -hmm. They're coding cheaper because they have no experience. Example, it's a six-hour event shoot. They don't know it's going to be eight. So it's going to be an hour arriving mm. earlier, six hours of shoot, and probably one and a half hours after that. Somewhere out there, there are photographers at the moment now really charging very cheap. Yes. Not because he wants to steal our business. Yeah. It is because he thinks it can be done cheaply. Let me give you Precisely. an idea. I was telling you about me yeah. restoring my yeah. BMW. Yeah. I thought I could do it until I start doing everything. Then I have to boot the cable to the back trunk. The hole that I have to pass through is this small. Then I realized, <laughs> that, oh shit, this is tougher than I think. Uh -huh. And you know what? Too late. I have to go back to the audio guy. And it was nice. You know what he did? He told me, spray a bit of silicon lubricant. Then I was going like, wow, okay, education. That's what you're yeah. doing. We're all here because of education. So I know you're quoting cheaper, not because you want to screw our life or the professional that's been serving the market for 25 years, mm -hmm. but because you thought it's cheaper and you are a victim as well. So that's why we all need to collectively learn. We are also learning how yes. to do your influencer video as interesting as yours, as quickly as mm -hmm. yours. You know what I learned? I learned not to be fussy. I had a new co-worker, his mm -hmm. name is Tashan, he's a videographer there. Mm -hmm. When he went and shoot Instagram video mm -hmm. for client, he does it in 20 minutes. Wow. He came yeah. back, he said, done. I was like, done? <laughs> what kind of half-ass shit did you pull off in the half an hour? <laughs> and he edited it. And when I look at it, I still find that it's better than all the other influencers that ah. I tend to follow. Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, you know, the problem that we have with standards yeah. and the problem that they have with the pricing yeah. is our HO problem that we are not willing to compromise. Mm -hmm. Right? Probably, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, education is a way to go. And what we're doing in Beyond Photography mm -hmm. is that not only we are teaching, we have been teaching for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And I can promise you this, the number of people that are willing to turn up for class, mm -hmm. in fact, when I saw your poster, I was kind of like admiring you. Oh, thanks. I was going like, okay, he's charging that price and this knowledge at this kind of time. It can get a bit worrying, but I know you have signups. Mm -hmm. I know you're doing well, mm -hmm. right? You know why? Because people like me stop teaching that kind of public class. Oh, We stop teaching through Yi Chang. We stop teaching because they go like, ah, no one's going to pay. They're all going to go online. So, so, so you're going for like yeah. online so, class? Yeah, I've been doing online class okay. for a long time now. Okay. So my point is this. You can also start educating. That's that one or two things that we, you're really good. So your teaching now actually make me realize one thing. Not just teaching. You're probably thinking like, I don't want to be a teacher. Not okay. everybody wants to be a teacher, yeah. right? So you know what you can do? You can be like Michelle. She goes out only does food styling sometimes. She doesn't do photo shoot for people all the time. But there are photographers that actually hire her to do food styling. And when she's styling the food, she noticed that the lighting is wrong. She just, you know, mind her own business and maybe just help them with the lighting a little mm -hmm. bit. Or another thing you can do is like you, you are so good with colored LED lights. Did let me you? ask you a question. If I were to hire you and let you be my colored light consultant, and worry about getting colored lights for the rim light, for the background light. Do you mind? No. As long as I pay, right? Yes, of course. Even better. Yes. Don't ask me to shoot photo. Yeah. Just pay me, mm. right? I think and I think this is a good point, Andrew, because the new photographers, they don't know that in a, a set, 
actually everyone play their own role. Yeah, they, they do everything. Yes, but the new photographer... And that's what I admire about them. They are them. doing everything. And, you know, they are quoting a very cheap price and they do everything. And they don't die. No, they they don't can die. still do everything. Yes, and they exactly. don't die. But, but my worry is that they're going to burn out. Uh, of course. Right? Burnout yeah. doesn't happen today. So if you're a new photographer, you're charging cheap, that's not the problem. You have to remember this. We all took some pros business at one point in our career. I had my share. Mm -hmm. I took my seniors, my Sifu, some veterans business away. I did that. But the point is that if you keep on doing that at a cheap price, you're going to get burnout because the amount of work that you have. When your price is low, you cannot outsource. Yeah. True, true. You cannot outsource. Mm -hmm. If you look at people like I work with, when they get a job, they can actually have enough budget to like outsource this. Yeah, you yeah. do this, you do yeah, this. Yeah. And then when they, they take the easier job actually, mm. you know? And, and in fact that you are outsourcing to those professionals, like calories, you know, right. gaffer, you know, right. those are professionals. Right. You can't you know do what? everything perfect. You know what? Outsource your influencer part to the influencer. <laughs> <laughs> You know what we do these days? We don't even teach photography. We teach corporate clients how to shoot ads. Because Yi Chong and I have this logic. We don't get to shoot as many expensive ads as we used to. You know why? Clients are shooting them themselves. Okay. And you know what's worrying? The quality is like shit. <laughs> and we cannot go up to the client and say, you know what? Your ads are like shit <laughs> because you shoot it themselves, right? Uh, that would be putting them down. We are still yeah. teachers. So what we do, I say, you are learning to shoot ads on your own. As a teacher, I should salute you. But instead of you making it not so nice, since you're going to be shooting it on your own, mm -hmm. let me help you. It's kind of like a doctor uh -huh. going up to a patient and say, you are going to do a surgery on yourself uh -huh. and it's going to turn out horrible anyway. There's <laughs> nothing I can say that can stop you from doing your own surgery. Yeah. At least let me teach you how to do it correctly. That's what we're doing. Mm. And with that premise, I think it's more acceptable. Yeah, yeah. Because I still remember that sometimes as a teacher going up to tell people that you're doing it wrongly doesn't work. Yeah. So what we're going now is that we have this program called the HRDC clients. Mm -hmm. They're actually coming up to us and we're teaching them how to shoot it better. Okay. And at the same time, we don't shoot. They shoot. We look at the script, we look at the dialogue, we look at the cinematography, mm -hmm. we look at the colouring. And that's what I like about Daryl. He incorporates a certain part that he's really good at. Gone are the days that photographers can go and teach you everything. Yeah. Unless my YouTube channel. So viewers, I would love to hear your comments. Head on to the comment section, tell us what you think and what you're doing, especially differently this year to get more business and to widen your scope of service in photography. Thank you, Andrew, for inviting me here today. The honour is ours. So you do charge. Wait, ah. <laughs> Telinga <laughs> gata. <laughs> Alright, sorry. You know what? We can actually go better. We can like do a money lending service to the info. Lending money? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay, roll this, roll this. Okay. <laughs> and thank you for coming to the studio and sharing your thoughts. Thank you, Andrew, for inviting me to this. <laughs>